Hi guys, welcome to another video. Um, here we are in my garage again, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, <laughs> uh, I'm doing a couple of things. Um, today, my subject is going to be rear shocks. Um, it's a, quite an old bike, this. It's a, brr, oh, I don't know, 98, 99. Uh, one of the problems is the suspension is just fucked, basically. Front end is just sloppy, the rear end just got no damping and preload or whatever. So um, I bought a second hand shock, it's a Hagon one, so it's quite nice, it's uh, fully adjustable. So I'm going to put that on, um, so I thought I'd just do a quick video just in case there's people out there who don't quite know what to do and what's entailed. Um, first of all, um, you want to get your bike on your centre stand, if you haven't got a centre stand you're going to have to tie it up or prop it up or something. because you basically need the rear wheel off the ground um, and what you want to do is you want to brace the rear wheel, put brick under it or something so that when you take the shock off it doesn't drop and also you just want to take the weight just a little bit so there's no weight on the linkages that you'll be undoing because that will make life such so much easier um, before doing this sort of stuff you want to get some sort of a penetrant spray or plus gas or something like that, just spray all the linkages and make sure they're all Okay, um, I've got the tank of seat off because I'm also doing something else, so don't worry about that. What you need to do is obviously you got your shock absorber in there. Under the bike, I've already taken these bolts out. Um, and she, you got those there, you got one for the linkage arm and uh, one for the linkage rods that go up. And once you've taken those bolts out, this, this bit should just fold down like this. And then you'll basically be able to drop the shock out straight from the bottom. Uh, but obviously, you've got to take the top bolt off. Um, you've got side caps on, or you may or may not have them. But on the other side, you can see I've got a hole there, and that's how you get to that. So you need to get a spanner or something in there and come in through that hole and take it off. And then, like I said, um, that arm should just drop down, and then you'll be able to drop the shock straight out of the bottom. Um, now, depending how old your bike is, it may be seriously rusty under there. Um, it's just one of those things, you're just going to have to persevere best you can. Um, luckily, um, these bolts are still pretty clean, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just clean those up a little bit. It's got a little bit of corrosion, but um, yeah, when you put it all together, stick a shitload of grease on. Um, because it'll just, if you ever have to sort of come back to it sort of five years down the line, it just makes life so much easier. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, quickly, um, drop that shock out, and then I'll just, uh, talk, talk a bit about the actual shock itself. Um, so I'll stop this, then I'll start again, uh, when I've got the shock out. <sighs> right. Come on, don't be a pain in the ass now. There we go. Lovely job. Yes, as you can see, definitely seen better days. Whew. Um, I had a bit of trouble with that top bolt. Uh, I put my spanner on it, got my extensions and a big ratchet on the other side, tried to undo it, and you could just feel that it was tensing up and it just wasn't going to go. Um, so what I did is I tried from the other side, the nut came straight off. Now what had happened is in the top of these there's a bush, and obviously the bolt goes through the top mount, and this side was fine, the nut come off, but what happens is water and shit gets inside the bush and seizes um, the bolting. So what I had to do, I mean I've just spent 20 minutes on that, it's really just took the piss. But I just have to backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and just keep sticking the spray in there, and eventually you'll just feel it go. But it was still incredibly tight, it took all my force to 
get that turning and that's a lot of force trust me and I was using the, my big bar my big breaker bar and you just got to keep it turning keep it lubed and because there's a lot of friction in that and when you're using this spray or whatever spray I was using it's down there somewhere um, when you're trying to turn this it will just burn the spray off so what you've got to do is constantly keep the spray on, keep the spray on, leave it for five minutes, come back to it, try it again. And you just got to, don't just like, Hulk smash, because um, you'll just break the bolt and you won't get anywhere. Um, where is it? There you can see, um, it's all rusted. You can just see it's all goopy and that's where it's stuck, inside the bush. So, um, yeah, I did well to get that off. Um... Right, well, if you're taking the shock off um, to just service it or put a new spring on, you, there's a few things you want to check. Obviously, you just want to check overall condition. Um, but if it looks like that, mm, the damper rod is in good condition. I mean, it's, apart from it being rusty and looking bad, I mean, it still works okay, but um, the seal has actually gone. I mean, I know that because there's no wall in it, it's just completely gone out there. So there's no oil in it, but you do want to check for leaks, check the seal. I mean, that's been out of oil for so long now, all the signs of it leaking are just gone. Um, you want to check the bushes um, at the end there. Um, you just want to check for cracks, any breaks in the spring. Um, but if you're sticking a new one on, um, you don't really need to worry too much about that. Um, but yeah, uh, putting it back on. It's pretty much uh, the same as taking it off, you just stick it up there, get the top bolt on and then do the bottom linkages up. And as always, use just put lots and lots and lots of grease on because uh, decent grease um, will stop uh, what just happened to me happening. And I have somewhere, there's, uh, there's different types of grease you can use. Oh, I don't know if I've got it here, aha, yes. Um, well in my cupboard I've got copper grease which a lot of old school people tend to like but I don't like it because over time it just turns to powder and it just loses its effectiveness um, you've got normal LM grease which is general purpose grease you can use CV grease which is really good because it's water resistant but this stuff is what I like using I use it on brake caliper sliders quite a lot because uh, it's really good red rubber grease it's highly resistant to corrosive agents, solvents, water. You stick that on and that'll stay on. Uh, it, it doesn't wash away. It's brilliant. So, I mean, a little tub like this costs a couple of pounds or that'll be a couple of dollars to you, uh, you uh, yanks out there. Um, but invest in a pot of this. It's good stuff. I mean, I've had this for years. I've done loads of brake calipers and all sorts with it. And I've still got loads left. You do not need a lot. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stick that on all the bolts. Uh, I'm going to clean up that dodgy bolt. And, uh, yeah, that's it, really. Um, if I sort of have any thoughts afterwards, I'll I'll put it on the uh, video. But, um, yeah, next one is going to be the forks. So I'm going to take the forks off, just inspect them. I'm not going to do the seals, because I know the seals are good. But I'm going to put new springs and new fork oil in and a different weight of fork oil. So that'll probably be my next video. But um, yeah, I mean, that's all for now. Uh, if I think of anything else, I'll add it on the end of the video. But yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. Um, hey. Nice one, chaps. Bye.